Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to share with you five personal insights gained from my experiences with psychedelic mushrooms. Straight off the bat, I have to say that I am not necessarily or in any way, shape or form an experienced psychonaut. There are many people out there who are much more experienced with psychedelic uh, drugs and hallucinogens than myself. However, I have had a good few experiences and some of them have been very beneficial. Even the bad trips, actually, they've been some of the most uh, challenging yet beneficial. So I thought it would be a great opportunity to talk about some of the insights I've gained and some of the intuitive, pragmatic uh, knowledge and wisdom that I have tried to take with me forward as I get older and older in life. Insight number one. The present moment is drowned out by routine and habit. The very first time I ever took psychedelic mushrooms, I was with a friend I went to school with and it was after school and we decided that we'd have a relatively small dose and we had the mushrooms preserved in honey. They were at his house and we ate them and in about 45 minutes or so, I started to feel the effects as I walked down through an underpass under a freeway and began noticing that the top of the underpass was convulsing and vibrating and I could see patterns and one of the patterns even looked like a squirrel. It was a pretty rainy day. Uh, the second thing I noticed was that the green grass area was the most beautiful green I've ever seen in my whole entire life and it's actually still a color I am reminded of in this day and age whenever I see green because I'd never seen green like that and I always have something to compare modern day green to. We decided we'd go for a walk after we uh, had really started to feel the effects. It was a really rainy day. A lot of the natural color was drowned out by the clouds but I remember walking past a flower and noticing just how purple it was. I'd never seen anything quite like that in my whole life aside from the green that I was talking about before four on the grass. This was the most beautiful color purple I had ever seen and I couldn't fathom that I'd never seen a flower like this before. Even though I'd walked past this particular area in the parklands many, many, many times, it was one of the most incredible things I'd ever seen. Something that I took from that experience was that the present moment, the heaven, the nirvana, the, the, the timeless Tao uh, that is surrounding us all the time and that permeates through us is drowned out as we lose ourselves in responsibilities and routines and habits and the uh, askings and tasks of the day-to-day -day life. Now, I'm not saying that responsibilities and tasks and obligations are not important because we need that to sustain us. We need to find a sense of meaning and uh, responsibility is something that can definitely go along way there, especially when it's social responsibility and, 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 and needs that go beyond just the self. But I do also believe, and this is an insight that I've taken from that first experience, that we need to when we can come back to the present moment, whether that's through meditation or being captivated by awe or spontaneity, because those are the moments that we will look back on and really remember upon our deathbeds when we actually can't do those things anymore. So the color purple of that flower really, really showed me and I believed it was telling me to, to stay in the present moment when you can. Do what you have to do. This is what the Eastern Hindu traditions talk about Dharma and Buddhism talks about dharma do what you need to do because you're a human being and this is you know the time to get things done but never forget who you are and where you've come from and that all of your answers and problems will be solved and you will find that bliss in the present moment and the color purple uh, is something that i use to catalyze me into that space of infinite bliss insight number two i am not who i think i am i'm actually what i do and i can change what i do probably around the fourth or fifth time that i experienced psychedelic mushrooms uh, i was about 18 i was on schoolies here in australia and it was the biggest dose I've ever had in my entire life. And the first hour of it was incredibly challenging. There was lots and lots and lots of anxiety. Uh, there was lots of nihilism. I didn't think I was ever going to be able to escape the prison that I'd found myself in. And uh, I thought I was going to die essentially. But what came from that experience was a hell of a lot of personal enlightenment and, uh, and wisdom gained, especially by coming through that initial 
challenging period of an hour, I felt like I was able to take on more and more difficult tasks because I'd never really push myself beyond my mental boundaries. I'd always push myself beyond my physical boundaries, whether it was sports or whatever I was doing, but mental boundaries was something that I wasn't quite used to uh, scrutinizing, I suppose. So I had all these experiences from my past come up and I saw it in the present. When I closed my eyes, I remember seeing my mum who was 50 meters tall looking over me as I was bound and shackled in a prison and she was doing this with her head and you know there was a hell of a lot of shame coming from that and I remembered a specific experience in my childhood that that was associated with when I felt like I'd done something wrong by her and that was coming up again but I felt from that moment that if this experience had almost stored itself in me. I started asking questions personally to do with who I was because I thought I was just Tom Ahern, you know, someone who enjoyed playing football. But all these experiences felt like they'd almost attached themselves to me like parasites and I was finding it really difficult to push them off. That moment alone taught me a lot about who I am and the the illusion of the mind. And I'd associated myself with what I did. You know, I was Tom Ahern, the footballer. That's who I thought I was. So I acted in that way day in, day out, as though I was working through this program to constantly tell myself that that's who I was. When these past childhood experiences came up, I was also able to recognize how they influenced my life and how they actually caused me to change and behave in different ways. So as I started to, I suppose, psychoanalyze myself a little bit deeper whilst I was on these mushrooms, I started to have a think about all the different ways in which these experiences changed my course in life. And if I wanted to actually take some of the power back and re-navigate on a, on a personally fulfilling or, or more meaningful path myself. So from those experiences coming up seemingly out of nowhere, I learned that who I am isn't actually a thing or an object in space and time, but it's actually what I do day in, day out. And if I don't like who I am, in which case I don't like what I do, all I have to do to change my identity is change what I do day in, day out. So I started to have a think about what I want to do and who I want to become. And some of the tasks that I now try to take on every day is I'll try to read for an hour every day. I'll try to get jujitsu in every day. I'll try to do all these things because I want to become someone that really has a lot of agency and autonomy over my life. So that was the second insight that came from a very challenging psychedelic trip, but uh, a very, very insightful and profound experience nonetheless. So insight number three, trauma is stored in the body. This is something that I realized as I was working through these past memories that I was actually getting a visceral response as though I was back in the experience itself, feeling that incredible shame and guilt from what I'd done as a child to my mum, which is relatively arbitrary if I was just to speak now about it. But uh, nonetheless, it had stored itself in my body as, a, as an emotion. And that emotion was guiding me throughout life. These trips weren't necessarily all bad or all negative or all challenging. They were also very positive. And some of the past experiences uh, that had stored themselves themselves in my body were, were very wonderful as, as well. I can remember feeling bliss and happiness and joy and a lot of self-love as well, which was something that I had not experienced for, uh, for a very long time or perhaps not really allowed myself to feel because I was drowned by this unconscious sense of guilt and shame that had come from these particularly difficult experiences in my childhood. There's now a hell of a lot of research into the idea that trauma is stored in the body. And there are some great books around this idea from a very scientific basis. The Body Keeps the Score by Dr. Bessel van der Kolk is a great one. Waking the Tiger by Peter Levine too. And even from a, an anecdotal uh, standpoint, when I have been to therapy and I've undergone some kind of trauma work in the past, I can remember feeling the feelings I felt when I was young and even acting in certain ways that I would have liked to act when I was in that experience as a child. One of the things that my therapist told me was that as she was working through a particular therapeutic technique, which helps for people that are struggling with PTSD, this is known as EMDR. 
She will see people respond in ways that they did when they were going through these traumatic experiences. One client, she said, uh, shot their hand up as fast as they possibly could. And they later told her that it was because the feelings of drowning came back when the trauma of nearly drowning and dying in the ocean came up from the meditative experience that was uh, EMDR. So there's a hell of a lot of science now that trauma is stored in the body, but I got that personal insight and that bit of wisdom from uh, my psychedelic mushroom experience when I was 18. Okay, so personal insight number four, time is an illusion. This is probably one of the more cliche uh, pieces of wisdom that anyone can gain from a psychedelic trip, but nonetheless, it is true. Uh, this was a fairly recent experience that uh, my partner and I undertook when we were doing it at home, and we both kept looking at each other and talking about how time seemed to pass like seconds. It was like half an hour went within five minutes, an hour went within 10 minutes. I felt more or less ambivalent about the fact that time is an illusion. Illusion, and I certainly now know that time seems to travel a hell of a lot slower when I'm engaging in tasks that I find difficult or boring or arbitrary compared with tasks that I really, really enjoy, like creating content, like participating in jujitsu, uh, like my Sunday relationship days with, uh, with my partner and our dogs. It seems to me that I'm much more in the present when I am captivated by awe and spontaneity and new information from the environment. And uh, I'm surrounded by people that I'm really interested in and uh, very engaged with as well. All of that stuff makes time travel very, very fast. So when I say time is an illusion, time from the objective standpoint of seconds uh, traveling by as seconds do, when you look at a clock, uh, when you look at an analog clock, that concept of time is an illusion. It's a very great way for us to maintain structure and order and get along. And it's very, very necessary. That's a conservative argument. It's very, very necessary. But the actual sense that time is an illusion to me makes sense because it's a construct and it's subjective based upon what we're doing and how we're feeling in those moments. The final insight that I've gained from my experiences with psychedelic mushrooms is that enlightenment is a process. It is not a destination. When I started reading some of the more Eastern philosophical traditions and religions, I stumbled upon this thing called enlightenment. And Aldous Huxley, who is my favorite author of all time, constantly spoke about the idea of burning the boats when you reach the shores of Nirvana. So when you finally get to that state of oneness and, uh, and the dissolve of duality, and the conjunction of yes and no, you are finally enlightened, liberated from the shackles and bounds of the ego, you have reached moksha, and that is you and you are done for eternity. I always thought it was a destination because it's certainly written as though it is. But what I've come to find with my experiences with psychedelic mushrooms is that enlightenment is actually a process. And every day as I learn more and I see myself more from the outside and I'm open to critique and honesty from other people who can act as my mirrors, I am constantly reinforced with this idea that as I learn more about myself, my integrity expands and I'm becoming more and more enlightened to the degree that I challenge my thinking. And that is the same for all of us. The more that we challenge our perspectives and the more that we are willing to step our toes into the chaotic waters, the more we are going to learn about not only ourselves and the way we function, but how the world and society functions and these matrices and these moral matrices, I suppose, that we have set up that we just take to be true. And I think it's important to question these ideas constantly, not to the point where we start to lose ourselves and we start to stand upon volatile ground, because as I said before, we need responsibility, we need routine, it helps create a sense of self, but without that chaos as well, we're not going to get anywhere. So you have to find this lovely balance between uh, chaos and order. And I try to learn every day so that my ego, I suppose, becomes identified with an ego that's happy to die over and over again, as opposed to be identifying with an ego that just dies. Because if I'm identified with that kind of ego, I'm always going to be scared. And I want to be open to new experiences so that I can look back on my life and see how far I've come to recognize the fact that life is a journey 
and enlightenment is a process too. So there were my five personal insights gained from my experiences with psychedelic mushrooms. I've tried other things before as well, but I found that mushrooms personally have been incredibly insightful for me along my lineage of life. I'd love to hear about some of your experiences or if you plan to use these plant medicines for beneficial use. More and more now is coming out about the therapeutic psychological benefits of plant medicines and hallucinogens. And I'm just so happy and excited to live in a world where we are starting to open ourselves to these ideas that not too long ago were very, very much frowned upon and made illegal, which I think is really unfortunate. And as we now know, unnecessary. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Leave a comment in in the comment section below. As I said, I'd love to hear more about your experiences, uh, some of your readings and insights gained as well. And let's see if we can expand the consciousness collectively here of our own insights so that we can grow together as a group. Talk soon. Bye.